with a frigid morning this morning. We were minus 12 degrees overnight, and yesterday's high temperature was minus 2, the first time that we've been below zero for a high temperature since late January, I guess actually early February 2019, when we had another really monstrous cold spell. It's a rare occasion here in Madison. It does happen occasionally, but not that often. And the, the deliverer uh, of this cold air today and f uh, yesterday is this giant region of high pressure that's sitting smack over Minnesota, and there's no winds. We've got fresh snow on the ground. We've got two inches of snow during the day on Saturday, and we've got uh, radiational cooling. The snow is cooling extremely well in the infrared and in, in insulating the ground underneath, so it's easy to make the air right near the surface, sitting on top of the snow surface, very, very cold, and that's what's really been the reason for our several days in a row with below zero temperatures overnight uh, and minus 12 last night. And there's widespread snow on the eastern side of this anticyclone, this region of high pressure. So the most amazing place where it's snowing is over the entire state of Arkansas, the northwest portion of Mississippi, nearly all of the western half of Louisiana, parts of Kansas and Oklahoma. And it snowed yesterday in Dallas and other places uh, where it doesn't usually snow. I think even Houston had snow yesterday. So much like what I talked about in the, in the uh, weather history this morning, this is a time of year where such things can happen on occasion, and this is one of those occasions, but an absolutely unbelievable cold spell, and the end of it with this snow event down in the deep south, uh, the western Gulf of Mexico states, is really something that is noteworthy. And In fact, it snowed yesterday uh, all day long or the day before in Seattle. I have a bunch of family who lives out there, and the uh, Lunar New Year was on Friday, so we had a Skype call last night, and it's snow everywhere in Seattle, and that's uncommon, although, again, not completely unprecedented, and uh, that is testimony to the fact that it's been cold and snowy, wintry over much of the 48 contiguous states over the last, some time during the last five to seven days, so it's been a notable period of wintry weather, and we are probably going to tie today the all-time longest streak of days in Madison with a high temperature of 11 degrees or colder. This will be the 10th straight day. It was last done in 1999, before that in 1963. If we can get 11 degrees or colder for tomorrow, which seems somewhat doubtful, but if we can somehow do it, we will establish an all-time record of longest consecutive such streak. So pretty interesting. There's weather all across the country. Not too much of it is well organized, and that's a good thing, given all of the conditions that could really lead to uh, disastrous weather. But the places where it's really going to be bad are places that don't usually contend with snow and ice. Here in northern Alabama, ice uh, draping down into southeastern uh, Mississippi and then far eastern and southeastern New, uh, Louisiana. There may even be freezing rain today in New Orleans, of all places. Unbelievable. And so that's going to be scary for motorists in those parts of the country. They don't ever see ice on the ground, so this will be completely foreign to them. Not to mention the snow that I already described over you know, uh, Arkansas, the lower Mississippi River Valley, half of Missouri, most of uh, Louisiana. These are places that don't see snow very often either. Uh, and then some lake effect snow in the Great Lakes states, and there was a little bit of snow over New England. There'll be some flurries there today, and then there's some in the Intermountain West. So a pretty wintry day across the country. And look at these temperatures that go along with it. This is really quite remarkable. Minus 10 at 9 a.m. This was, wasn't as cold as we got last night, but minus 10, it had recovered to by, actually by 8 a.m. our time. Minus 10 at Green Bay, minus 6 at Houghton. Minus 36 at International Falls is the coldest temperature on this map, and that's in the heart of the cold air. It's right in the center of that region of high pressure. And then look at these temperatures all the way down south. Uh, this is Corpus Christi, Texas, 16 degrees. That never gets that cold. Houston is 15, 6 above 0 in Dallas, minus 9 at Amarillo, and 0 at Lubbock. Uh, so these are really, really cold temperatures. And look at how Florida stands out like a sore thumb. Miami 78, Tampa 71, and Jacksonville 53. That's it for really warm temperatures. It's a little bit above freezing along the uh, Gulf Coast of the Carolinas, but that is it. Otherwise, just about every place in the country is way below normal. In fact, um, this portion of the uh, sort of southwestern U.S. has places, you know, say Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, parts of New Mexico, places where the temperatures are between 25 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit below average for this time of year. So an exceptionally brutal cold spell for these parts of the country. And here's a satellite movie over the continental United States and adjacent waters. And you can see the cloud mass that's responsible for the snows that we saw on the surface map in Arkansas, southern Missouri, parts of Louisiana. That is taking better shape. It's not as well developed as some of the cyclones we've seen 
on the satellite picture earlier this year, of course, because it's still growing. But it's, um, it's a decently organized weather system, and it's producing widespread clouds, and underneath the cloudiness, a good deal of precipitation, as we'll see in the radar in just a minute. Some of that will graze the southern border of our state. It's not impossible that the far southeastern tip of Wisconsin may see a little bit of light snow later in the day today. But it seems to me that we won't see any, if, if, if not much, if any, here in Madison. Uh, and then there's a cloud mass that's off the coast of the northeastern United States, and that is not really developing any longer. It's getting kind of stretched out uh, in a, in a north south, northwest to, uh, or southwest to northeast direction. And then you can see clouds kind of streaming onto the west coast in a somewhat clockwise rotational fashion. We'll see that when we go to the west coast satellite image in just a minute. Down here over far southeastern Louisiana, the panhandle of Florida, these clouds that are blowing up over the Gulf of Mexico, those are thunderstorm clouds. So there'll be some convective um, heavy rains down in that location just on the warm side of the extraordinary temperature contrast that we saw on the surface map uh, of temperature just a second ago. So it's going to be interesting all day long down in the southern states, just to our south, actually. And here's the radar that goes along with that over this uh, last several hours this morning. And you can see the difference in the radar reflectivity, which is what we get here in color. Where it's orange and red, that means uh, heavy precipitation, usually liquid uh, precipitation, perhaps liquid-coated snowflakes in northern Mississippi here at the last moment. But certainly this, just east of New Orleans, is probably rain or freezing rain. And then when you get back into Missouri, parts of Oklahoma, and uh, northwestern, maybe the, second, the western half of Arkansas, a much more muted set of blues and greens. That's because snowflakes don't reflect the radiation quite as well. But that's all snow. And it's snowing everywhere in this location. And yesterday it snowed in Houston and Dallas. So it's kind of unbelievable. And then here's the little bit of snow that's kind of making its way just across uh, the southern tip of Lake Michigan and avoiding our state. And you can see, again, a little bit of this lake effect band right here in the middle of Lake Michigan that's a separate piece of the snow than this linear structure that's going across the southern part of the state of Michigan. And then a little bit of scattered snow over into New England. And here's some scattered snows into um, eastern Washington and southwestern Idaho. And now finally we'll look at the satellite movie for the west coast, which is really qu quite vivid in one particular aspect. I feel like I've been saying this all along uh, because it's so interesting to know. Here's Hawaii where the cursor is, so it's well down south. This cloud mass uh, in the infrared satellite movie has its origins in the central part of the Pacific Ocean and at latitudes south of Hawaii. So this is a deep central Pacific tropical airstream that's coming straight up towards the coast of Oregon. And just offshore, you can see it kind of turns to be a little bit of a clockwise rotation to the flow of the clouds and the moisture that are associated with them. And that's driving then, as soon as it gets on shore, it's driving straight southward toward Arizona and New Mexico. That'll be the next weather disturbance of concern in the central and eastern United States in the mid part of the week. But this is really a, a pretty remarkable uh, piece of evidence for the connection between the deep tropics in the Pacific and the um, extremely active weather over frigid continental North America. And so there's all manner of interactions constantly going on between the extra tropics where we live, that is outside the tropics, and the tropics themselves. Those interactions tend to get more robust near the end of the winter than they are in the middle of it. This is a really good example of that. So a pretty interesting day across the Western Pacific Basin. Not may very many well-organized weather systems. There's a well-organized airstream instead. So stay tuned. Let's hope we can get 11 degrees or colder for tomorrow and set an all-time record. We may not do that. And we're going to have continued interesting weather for the month of February. We're halfway through it now. Today's the 15th, so we're 14 days into it in history. We are 16.8 degrees below average for the first half of February. And the average daily temperature in February 14th is about 23 Fahrenheit. So we should, we need to be averaging nearly 40 degrees for the average of that daytime low and the daytime high for the rest of February to get back to average. We're not going to do that. So we're going to be way below normal for the month of February. The question is just how far below normal. And I guess we'll see that as the next couple of weeks wear on.